Okay, good evening. I'd like to call the North Road Village Board meeting for Monday, November 2nd, 7th, 2022 to order. Please join me in a silent prayer and meditation. All right, thank you. Please join me in a Pledge of Allegiance. All right, roll call, please. Mayor Gafino. Here. Trustee Carroll. Here. Trustee Curtis. Trustee Gately. Here. Trustee Lowry. Here. Trustee Nedgefedge. Here. Trustee Salazar. Here. All right, thank you. Any audience comments at this time? All right, seeing none, I'll move on to the presentation by Lauder, Lauderbach and Eamon regarding the Village 2022 audit process. Jason? Tonight we have uh, Brad Porter, audit manager, uh, here to give a brief uh, overview of, of their audit process. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Brad Porter. I'm here on behalf of Lauterbach and Amen as the principal that oversees the village's financial statement audit process. Uh, hard to believe it's that time of the year again, but uh, I will keep this very brief here this evening, uh, just providing a recap of the documents that we've issued uh, for the 531-2022 audit cycle. So I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Uh, and before I go any further, I'd like to give a special thank you to uh, Jason's team for a tremendous job. Well done once again this year. Um, I know this was his first audit cycle, and I can certainly say that you're in great hands. So uh, the finance team does a tremendous job of making sure that there are safeguards in place over village assets and that there's a seamless line of communication maintained throughout the audit process. So we certainly appreciate everything that they had done. Uh, it's my understanding that each of you have received a copy of the do final documents that we've issued. Um, you can follow along, uh, but my job here this evening is to, again, keep it brief and cover a couple high-level points, uh, beginning with a three-page document that we issue in accordance with Statement on Auditing Standard number 114. We're required to state whether or not we had any disagreements or difficulties that we had encountered throughout our audit process. And I'm happy to report in the body of that letter, you will find no such disagreements or difficulties noted. Uh, now, everybody should have a copy of the uh, very thick audit report here. Um, I will cover just a couple of key pages. I know there's a lot of material, so certainly feel free to get in contact with me following tonight's presentation. Uh, if you can turn with me to page 11. On page 11, you're going to find what is known as the Certificate of Achievement Award. Uh, this is receipted for the fiscal year ending May 31st, 2021. These are always reported one year in arrears, as we'll be ultimately applying for the fiscal year 2022 award with this document here. Um, ultimately, representing the highest form of financial reporting excellence that any governmental organization can receive. So this is quite an accomplishment. There's a lengthy list of compliance requirements that must be met to ultimately ultimately received this award. So I did want to certainly start it on a good note here with uh, the Certificate of Achievement Award. Uh, jumping to page 14. You should find our Lauterbach and Amen letterhead here. Um, I certainly see this as the most important page within your audit document. Uh, in addition to stating your responsibility as management for the audit process, which is to provide a clean set of financial statements to work off of, we go on to state what our responsibility is for the village's financial statement audit, and that is to generate an opinion on the financial statements that are provided to us. Happy to report uh, for the fiscal year ended May 31st, 2022, we have issued an unmodified opinion which is, uh, you're gonna notice a trend here, the cleanest form of opinion that any entity can receive in the government space, ultimately stating that we as your auditors believe the financial statements to be presented fairly and that there are sound internal control practices in place. Uh, now on pages 18 through 32, I just wanted to point this section out. Uh, I'll be the first to admit the financial statements themselves can be quite overwhelming at times. So uh, this is a section that we call our management discussion and analysis section. I oftentimes will like to point this section out to boards as it's gonna give you a really great narrative recap of fiscal year 2022 at a glance 
charts, graphs, comparative data, things that sometimes are a little bit more uh, easy to understand and interpret. So um, certainly spend most of your time and energy here, and I think you'll walk away with a pretty good overview of your fiscal year at a glance. Uh, now, just one financial highlight. We'll stick to solely the general fund here this evening. Page 41. Now, once you're to page 41, you'll notice that this statement is called our statement of revenues, expenses, and changes in fund balance. That is a fancy term for your income statement uh, in the government world. So the third line up from the bottom there is going to be called your net change in fund balance. That is essentially your increase or decrease in your overall net position of that respective fund for the fiscal year. So uh, I'm just going to highlight the general fund here. You'll see there was just shy of an $815,000 net increase for fiscal year 2022, ending the year with just over $8.5 million in accumulated fund balance. Now, the third piece of required communication that we issue is what we call our management letter. Uh, the purpose of our management letter is really to communicate or convey anything that falls outside the audit document itself. That can be things like uh, management letter recommendations, best practices, upcoming accounting pronouncements, uh, et cetera. I'm happy to report we had no fiscal year 2022 current recommendations, which is quite impressive. Uh, we had one prior recommendation that is included in the body of this letter solely for transparency purposes only. This is uh, in relation to an upcoming accounting pronouncement that uh, we'll be working directly with the team on for fiscal year 2023. So it's in every management letter comment that we issue. Uh, so this is about as clean of a management letter as you can possibly receive. So congratulations. Uh, that kind of concludes my audit coverage and happy to field any questions that you might have. Any questions? Oh, very good. Yep, very good. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much for your yep. time. All right. Uh, consent agenda. Move to approve. Second. Discussion? Roll the roll, please. Trustee Gately? Yes. Trustee Lowry? Yes. Trustee Netfedge? Yes. Trustee Salazar? Yes. Trustee Carroll? Yes. Trustee Curtis? Yes. All right, thank you. Under new business, item one, Steve. Thank you, Mayor. Item number one is a gas station liquor license request. This is for the mobile on Route 31. And uh, there was an existing mobile that has changed ownership and the new owners would like to sell uh, liquor there. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? <clears throat> Go roll, please. Trustee Nedgevich? Yes. Trustee Salazar? Yes. Trustee Carroll? Yes. Trustee Curtis? Trustee Gately? Yes. Trustee Lowry? Yes. All right. Thank you. Motion carries. Item two, Jason. Uh, this this item is uh, just the board accepting uh, the audit report that was just uh, discussed by Brad. Um, before that, I just have a really quick uh, uh, PowerPoint of uh, some high level items within the budget. I mean, the, the audit, Brad mentioned that the management uh, discussion analysis was kind of a good place to look at. So I picked out a few um, high, high level, you know, key points within that. Um, in addition, we also will uh, issue a popular annual financial report, which is really just takes this audit and boils it down to about a 12 or 13 page document, makes it a little easier to read. Um, so with that, first item I wanted to point out is a statement of net position, which is essentially the balance sheet for the entire village. It's broken out into two categories, the governmental activities, which is basically the general fund, um, the capital projects fund, the TIFs, and then the business type activities, which is essentially the water fund. Um, so within there, the village has had $162 million in, in assets, the majority of which was made up of, of our capital assets. Um, but within the current other assets of $44 million, $37.5 million of that was cash and investments, was, that, was actually an increase of $6.3 million this past year. So we've had a significant amount of cash investments on hand during the year. Uh, moving down total liabilities, $30 million. The majority of that is uh, made up of our, our police pension liability, 14.8 million, which is slightly up from last year. As I mentioned from the last um, committee of the whole meeting, we had a number of factors kind of outside of our control that, that made that number go up this year. Some new assumptions, mortality tables uh, were taken into effect, which kind of pushed that number up um, uh, by, by itself. And then moving down into the, into the total net position, um, net position can be looked at as kind of a, a barometer of how the village's total financial health is. Any increases uh, in net position from year over year are kind of shown as our, our financial uh, 
stability is improving. If it's going the other way, that means we're kind of deteriorating a little. Um, but within our total net position, uh, the unrestricted balance, $17 million, is the main uh, portion to look at here because obviously that's the uh, the portion that's spendable and not uh, tied up or for legal reasons or within our capital assets. The largest portion, that $110 million of net investment in capital assets, that's basically the value of all of our assets backing out any related debt on that asset. So we have the police department, we have a little bit of debt still outstanding on that. So that gets reduced out of uh, our capital asset balance for purposes of the net position. Moving on to the statement activities, which is essentially the income statement for the total, the total um, village. In total, we had a just over $8 million net position increase. So as I mentioned, uh, increases in net position shown as a strength for our financial uh, stability. Total net position, net uh, position is $131 million for the year. Um, some, some highlights here, total revenues increased $4.8 million from last year. Um, within this, operating grants are actually down $1.6 million because we did receive money from the CARES Act last year. Uh, we also did receive capital contributions from developer of $4.1 million related to infrastructure from the Lincoln Valley uh, development. And then total sales tax revenue increased over a million dollars or 13% from last year. Um, on the expenditure side, we actually had a decrease of $1.4 million. Uh, most of this was due to last year. Um, we had a $2.5 million transfer from moving the library's uh, building back over to the library. So we, that increased expenditure. So that goes away this year. And then we just had some other um, you know, miscellaneous increases in personnel, um, engineering, pension-related items. The general fund, we would touch on that a little bit earlier, but we had a total increase of $800,000 in the general fund. Um, some highlights here, revenues are $2.4 million over budget. As I mentioned, sales tax, $1.3 million over budget. Income tax, $900,000 over. And building permits for $400,000 over budget. So very strong revenues for the year. Expenditures were $403,000 under budget. Um, we did originally have a $600,000 general fund transfer to the capital projects funds because of, of these items, uh, revenues coming in way higher than expected, expenditures under, we were able to increase that to $2.75 million going over to the capital projects fund. It actually did leave us though with a general fund reserve of 69.5% of operating expenditures. Um, as you recall, the village's policy is 40 to 50%. So we're well above our kind of our, our standard uh, reserve policy here. So a very strong financial position within the general fund. A couple of quick highlights of other major funds, Route 31 TIF, we actually had an increase of $253,000. Um, within that TIF, we consolidated the North Lincoln Way and the Sperry TIFs into Route 31 at the end of the year. Capital projects, as I mentioned, we had an increase of $3 million to $10,417,000. Um, the non-home rule sales tax, so that's the half a percent sales tax that goes into that fund. 395,000 over budget. Expenditures were 1.8 million under budget. We had some delay in some capital projects uh, that didn't happen, but are still to happen uh, either in this year or in future years. And the $2.75 million transfer to the, from the general fund. And then the waterworks, we had the net position increase of 1.2 million to 200 or 28.4 million. 377,000 was just due to operating income. And, I, and as I mentioned, the capital um, contribution of water mains made up 720,000 of that. Very quickly, the village's capital assets, $118 million. Um, capital, net capital assets actually increased $3 million for the year. This was due to 1.4 million from the completion of the 21 road program. We started the 22 road program of 1.3 million. That's actually construction in progress as of the end of the year. Um, as it, Lincoln Valley, developer contribution. So this would be roads, sidewalks, storm sewers, water mains. We accepted just under $4.1 million worth of assets to, for the year. And we had various vehicle and equipment uh, purchases of roughly $360,000. And then those things were reduced uh, by just normal depreciation on, on other assets for a total gain of $3 million in total assets. And then real quick, the long-term liabilities. So this would be the village's debt or pension obligations. Um, a couple of key notes, the IMRF pension, last year it was a $1 million net pension liability. 
but due to improvements in IMRF, they actually switch over to net pension asset. So we're actually 100.4% 100 funded. So fully funded on the IMRF side. That will fluctuate from year to year. So next year we, we might see 98%. We could see 100% again, but we should be you know, pretty well off on the IMRF side um, in, in the near future. I mentioned the police pension liability of $14 million, 60.8 60 funded. We have just under $4 million left on the police department debt, which is due January 1st of 2029, and just a little over $4.1 million on the water debt, which is due January 1st of 32. And as you mentioned, there's much more uh, information within the audit or within the management uh, discussion analysis, but that's just some key highlights. All right. Thank you. Well done. Uh, I think we're all very proud of our financial position. So we've always have a uh, have. So thank you. Anybody else with that? I just want to say congratulations on to you and the team, <laughs> your staff for doing such an, a stellar job, you know, coming in so recently. This is your first full year. So I just wanted to offer congratulations and we're all very proud of the job that you've done. Thank you. Great. Roll call, please. Oh, motion Sorry. to accept. Second. 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 Roll call, please. Trustee Gately? Yes. Trustee Lowry? Yes. Trustee Nedgevedge? Yes. Trustee Salazar? Yes. Trustee Carroll? Yes. Trustee Curtis? All right. Thank you. Item three, Jason. Thank you. So this is the uh, approval of the estimate for the tax levy purposes. Uh, this is what we'll notice in the newspaper and then come back in the first meeting of December to uh, officially approve. Uh, from the last uh, committee, the whole discussion we had, we came back and the village is gonna do a 0% uh, levy increase. So we're gonna ask the same levy of 2,690,000. Um, we expect this due to uh, new construction, we'll actually bring in $20,355 of, of new money, even though we're keeping a flat uh, levy increase. Levy. Uh, included in here is the library's levy of two million dollars and seventeen, so, and this is actually a three point eight percent levy over their last uh, request. This is for both their corporate and their building maintenance purposes. Um, and we mentioned we were looking into some of the special service areas um, about potential increases. We do have two that we're proposing. Um, the first one, Willow Lakes. Currently, we um, levy two hundred dollars for mowing but we're having issues with the fence along Randall Road and portions falling down or need maintenance here. We do have approximately $35,000 um, on hand within the SSA from years back when we actually accepted the fence and built the fence. Um, but we're coming in with estimates of needing a much larger amount to actually replace fences, portions of that fence. So what we're proposing is to start levying $10,000 and we'll just start doing piece by piece throughout the years. Um, we're expecting this to take the kind of the average uh, homeowner there pays in about $1.35 into the SSA. We expect this to go up to around $67, kind of plus or minus depending on home values. Um, and then the second one, Waterford Oaks, we have a uh, retention pond um, issue here. Again, we're, we're gonna propose a $10,000 increase. Um, the last uh, estimate we have is about $30,000 or so um, to repair that pond. So this one could last a few years until we get enough money and able to do the the, uh, the repairs on that pond. Uh, currently, homeowners pay about twenty five to fifty five dollars into the SSA based on on actual home value. We anticipate this to go to about forty five to eighty five dollars uh, with this additional ten this ten thousand dollars. But again, I this will probably last a few years until we build up the money and we're able to actually do the repair with that. Uh, motion to accept. Second. Discussion? Roll, please. Trustee Gately? Yes. Trustee Lowry? Yes. Trustee Nedgevedge? Yes. Trustee Salazar? Yes. Trustee Carroll? Yes. Trustee Curtis? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Item four, Jason. This item is renewal of the village's uh, workers' comp and liability uh, policy for the year 2023. Um, the total policy came in at 335000 and $424, which is a 7% increase over what it was last year. Um, IML RMA is offering a 1% discount uh, if we pay by November 18th, or I believe. So that brings it down to $332.69 or $69.76. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Discussion? Roll, please. Trustee Gately? Yes. Trustee Lowry? 
Yes. Trustee Nedgepedge. Yes. Trustee Salazar. Yes. Trustee Carroll. Yes. Trustee Curtis. Yes. All right. Thank you. Item five, Chief. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, staff is looking for approval to purchase three 2023 Ford Utility all-wheel drive patrol vehicles from Morrow Brothers Ford. They're located located in Greenfield, Illinois. Morrow Brothers won the state bid pricing and is a state bid vendor that we have purchased vehicles from in the past. Um, the total cost is $130,196. We have a budget amount of $152,100 um, passed in the last budget. Motion approved. Second. Discussion? Rural, please. Trustee Gately? Yes. Trustee Lowry? Yes. Trustee Nedgevedge? Yes. Trustee Salazar? Yes. Trustee Carroll? Yes. Trustee Curtis? All right. Thank you. Item six, John. Kevin's Kevin. actually going to start this one and then it's going to go to John. So um, we are at the point now where we are uh, need to start moving forward with the uh, proposed land swap with the Southern King County Training Association. It, it, this has a really long lead time to it. So we're entering into a contract, but um, we still have to go through the uh, statutory hoops to exchange land with a private entity, even though the Southern King County Training Association is, um, you know, the, the, the two uh, par uh, members of it are both public, public entities, still it's a, a private not-for-profit. So <clears throat> um, statute, the Illinois Municipal Code explains how you have to go through the process of getting a land exchange approved. The agreement is the first part of it. And we have a long due diligence um, aspect to it because we need to um, get working on the architectural design, um, including what the building footprint will look like before we can determine how, you know, how big the parcel needs to be for us to acquire from them. <clears throat> so the, the concept is we're going to exchange um, the, property where our current public works facility exists for a corresponding property on the training association property where the new public works facility is going to be built. Um, but we, we have to have a legal description before we can even get to the point where we can uh, entertain, you know, uh, determine whether we're going to move forward. So um, the agreement kind of kicks everything off and uh, the uh, the training association will have a, a due diligence period also because they're eventually going to take the public works facility that we're currently using and you know they want to get in there and take a look at it and kick the tires and make sure that it's going to meet their needs meanwhile <clears throat> we'll get to work on uh, doing the, the design and so on uh, developing a legal description based upon the uh, the size of the uh, vacant parcel that we need to acquire from them once we have a legal description for both the village property and the Kane County property that are going to be exchanged, then we're going to come back to the board and that and we will start the statutory process. So the statutory process requires uh, the board, three quarters of the board, to set a hearing on determining whether to go through with the, through with the land swap. And we have to have certain findings. For instance, we have to be able to find that the values are approximately the same, equal to or greater than, um, and some other things as well. Then we have to have a peer, we have to publish for a public hearing. Then we have the public hearing. Then we can come back and the board can approve the land swap. But we we can't even start that until we have a legal description. We can't get the legal description until we have a design for the building. So you know, it's kind of a long lead time. Uh, and But all you're doing is approving the agreement. The agreement is still subject to approval of the land slop according to the statutory you know, protocol. It's still subject to the training association's due diligence period. And it's still subject to our due diligence too, to make sure that it, it's something that we can really take on. You know, once we get the architect working on the design and the, the engineers working on uh, the other aspects of it, because we're actually, eventually we will be um, coming back around to do a PUD over the whole property, the, the village property and the Southern Train, uh, King County Training Association property, where the roads may be reconfigured slightly based upon the building footprints. We will take over the roads and we'll, we'll maintain them. 
Uh, we also have to determine uh, the size of the stormwater facilities, which we will also take over and maintain. And you know, a lot of that's going to be determined through the PUD process. So this this is a long lead time. Um, you know, uh, we, we could be you know that the actual transfer of the property may not take place for a year even. Um, and then it, after the property transferred, the, the transfers the way the agreement reads. Um, we will continue to operate in the public works facility while we build the new facility. And then the training association will take possession of the public works facility when after we built out the new facility and move into it. So again, it's kind of a long lead time and the agreement kicks it all off. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Discussion? Trustee Carroll? Yes. Trustee Curtis? Yes. Trustee Gately? Yes. Trustee Lowry? Yes. Trustee Nedgebend? Yes. Trustee Salazar? Yes. Item seven, John. Thank you, Mayor. Um, if you recall, earlier in this year, we had removed a significant amount of roots from a storm sewer over off of Ridge Road in between the Lincoln Valley um, new development and the townhomes on Ridge Road. Um, those roots were cleared out. And now the next part of this project is to line that pipe so those roots can't get back in there. Um, we went out to bid, got four bids from four companies that have done this type of work in the past. Um, we had two bids, or we had an, a base bid and an alternate bid for this project. So the base bid was basically just saying, we're going to do 600 feet of lining of the worst storm sewer there is. The alternate was to add 300 more feet that weren't quite as bad, but could create a problem in the future. The bids came back pretty good. Um, th the low bid for all the work was $132,187. That's slightly over our budget. Um, we we had budgeted, I believe, one hundred and sixty thousand dollars. So we would be about seventeen thousand dollars over budget. But if you consider the fact that should that pipe have to be lined in the future, we would have to pay an additional mobilization cost for this company to come back. So really, it's more cost effective just to tackle that additional pipe at this time. Yeah. So. Um, it'd be the staff recommendation at this point to award this contract to the person, that, the, the company that provided the lowest alternate bid in Citrus Form Technologies USA um, LLC in the amount of one hundred thirty-two thousand one hundred eighty-seven dollars. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion. Yeah, John. Um, does this seem like it's going to solve the problem, or yeah, at I, least it's our experience with that the lining is going to probably have. The problem solved the the question is we are going to televise this probably every couple of years just to keep an eye on it because the the root of the problem well no pun intended <laughs> is the the willow trees that are along the, the property line and those roots can be really invasive and they chase after water so if we do notice at any time that mm. those roots start trying to penetrate that liner it might be a situation where we have to approach the residents and either do some root pruning or maybe remove and replace those trees all right thank you Overall, please. Trustee Lowry? Yes. Trustee Nedgevedge? Yes. Trustee Salazar? Yes. Trustee Carroll? Yes. Trustee Curtis? Yes. Trustee Gately? Yes. All right. Thank you. Item eight. Mike? Thank you, Mayor Adam. It is an ordinance authorizing an agreement for the purchase of 23 North Lincoln Way. Uh, this is the three quarter acre property located at the southeast corner of Oak Street and Route 31. Uh, it is currently being occupied by the Obergon Medical Clinic. Uh, we are intending to purchase this property um, with the understanding that we're going to swap the land with the fire district that we discussed in the past. Um, for whatever reason that doesn't work out, we would develop it as part of the block one development area. Um, we do have a signed contract included in the report tonight where we had set it on a purchase price of $780,000 and a January 6th uh, closing date. We do actually have a post-closing post-possession uh, agreement right now that would allow the business owner after the closing of the property to stay on there up until June 2nd of 2023 with a 30-day option to stay on. Um, this does include the ability um, for the fire district and the village to get on the property and assess surveying work, any, any due diligence associated with the development of the fire district property. Um, and it would be rent free and um, there would be any insurance, any liabilities that would come across would be um, coming upon the actual medical clinic to take care of. So uh, with that, we do have a signed agreement and contract here as part of this uh, petition. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? The roll, please. Trustee Salazar? Yes. Trustee Carroll? Yes. Trustee Curtis? Yes. Trustee Gately? Yes. Trustee Lowry? Yes. Trustee Nedredge? Yes. 
All right. Thank you. Uh, Village President Report. I just want to comment on our leaf pickup program. I think uh, it's moving along nicely. I think it's a bumper crop year for leaves. And uh, I just want to compliment your team that it's, you know, it's, it's a long ride to sit behind that uh, truck all day. But uh, and the residents do really like it. So I've heard quite a few comments and some people in other towns wish they had it. So I'm glad to I hear told... the guys are working hard. They're getting in an hour early and Alex and Jason were there as I left tonight. So they're really putting in the work. Well done. Well done. Yeah, it's That's a all. Have. Popular program. Yep. Trustee comments. I, I would just like to say that I'm very excited about the thing we just passed, the approval of the overground purchase. We've been talking about the block one for I don't know how many years. And it's I, I'm so happy that we are at the staff and the board are in unison to move forward with block one. I think it's pretty exciting for the village. Anyone else? Agree. Okay. Administrator report. Uh, just a couple of things. We have our Veterans Day uh, Memorial Ceremony that we host at 11 o'clock a.m. on Friday on Veterans Day itself at our Willoway Memorial. And then we also just want to point out as a part of that public works land swap, um, there was a memo in the packet from John and, and basically what it is, is it's explaining that uh, staff is going to move forward with the architect now as, as Kevin was alluding to. That's a significant process. It's another uh, commitment of about $105,000 in architectural uh, renderings and whatnot, but that's what's necessary to move forward with uh, the final design of the layout. Um, with all that talk in there, I want to make sure that there's there are checks and balances in place. That, you know, we're moving forward as if we're building a, a building, but at, at different points, things would come back for the board before we actually go forward with building a building. We're not going to show up and say, hey, by the way, here's your building, and this is what it costs. So that's all I got. All right. Thank you. Department reports. Thank you, Mayor. Chief. Um, staff did learn today we had some good news. Our therapy dog will be arriving on December 12th. Um, for two days of training. And Indy will be a member of the department after that. He will come and get sworn in before the board. And we plan on having a meet read at the PD for the community after that. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? Motion adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Begin the call meeting shortly. <laughs>